Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sandu Prakash. I am uh, working with Intuit. Uh, I work in the data engineering and analytics group. Uh, I have worked uh, quite some time on the Hadoop performance part. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, uh, a tool uh, that we had developed uh, internally uh, uh, for Hadoop performance jobs. Right? Uh, tool is more targeted for the Hadoop beginners users. Uh, they come from the RDB background or uh, they are learning Hadoop, right? Uh, so people, such people make very common mistakes. Make very common mistakes about uh, you know Hadoop jobs, Hive queries, and other uh, you know ecosystem uh, software. So uh, let's start. How uh, what are what are the uh, pain points for Hadoop beginners, right? Um, so they come into the system, they run any kind of uh, you know MapReduce job or Hive queries, uh, big script and all, right? Uh, to the Hadoop system. Um, then they see okay, this uh, often they see okay, my job is not Zero percent, zero percent, and then uh, you know one percent. So it's moving really slow. Though there is no exception, no error, but uh, it's moving really slow. Uh, no idea what. So they go to uh, you know uh, job tracker, uh, Hadoop job tracker page. By the way, uh, so for the audience expectation in this uh, talk is, I am assuming that uh, at least uh, you know uh, you have worked with Hadoop a little bit. Uh, you know, you know all these things. Um, so. They go to the job tracker web page and see uh, about information about their job, right? Uh, a lot of information, a lot of counters, a lot of uh, configurations. But uh, as a beginner, they are not able to make any sense out of it, right? Uh, these counters, they hardly make sense out of why, why the job is slow, right? Um, leaves them frustrated, right? Uh, what is wrong? They go to their operations team and other teams to figure out what is actually uh, going wrong. Um, so the real pain point is uh, people that are new and the beginners, right? Uh, when they write MapReduce jobs, high queries, and other things, uh, they they really make common mistakes. I I've, I've worked in the performance engineering team. Uh, people make common mistakes uh, like not impressing, for example, not uh, enabling compression, right? Which is, which is uh, really important when you're working with them. Uh, and uh, you know, pe people have no clue why their job is slow because they don't know what are the uh, you know. Uh, Best practices to write a uh, map reduce job, and uh, apart from this, uh, these these unoptimized or suboptimized jobs actually create extra less pressure under cluster when you're working in you know, multi-tenant Hadoop deployments, right? Uh, um, and also, people don't learn the optimizations and Hadoop counts. They really don't know what information uh, Hadoop already gives and uh, they, how how they utilize it, right? Um, so, we have developed this tool. Uh, Doctor Hadoop, what is what it is? It is basically a rule-based analyzer, and uh, it actually makes sense out uh, sense out of the configuration and the counters that uh, that Hadoop provides and the logs of it. Uh, it finds out the common mistake. It has the rules predefined. Um, it also gives the recommendations, um, like uh, recommendations on all the rules that are there. Shows the severity of the recommendation in the different cases, right? And leaves the user happy. Um, since I don't have much time. Talk is 15 minutes. I will not go uh, deep into the architecture. Just to show the data flow here, that we collect all sort of logs uh, from uh, from Hadoop, like job history logs, JMX messages, and all the metadata that we have. We collect it uh, using a component called JParser, and then we store it into into the repository. And then finally, there is a, a web app uh, web app uh, called Doctor Hadoop, which has a pluggable tool. Uh, um, so here is the uh, Secret sauce of this Doctor Hadoop, right? Uh, which are uh, which are the rules, and these are uh, the pluggable rules, as I said. Um, so if I talk about, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'll I'll go through the rules one by one. So this map still uh, in in a MapReduce job, right? Uh, in a mapper space, uh, uh, every mapper has sort buffer, right? Uh, a buffer wherein uh, it stores uh, the intermediate data, the map output, and then it uh, finally sorts and uh, partitions it and so that are that are the spills. So in your MapReduce job, the more the spills that you are creating, the mapper is creating, uh, the more the disk reads and writes the map, right? And and that will uh, reduce the performance of the job, right? Um, so what this uh, tool has all the information about about your job uh, at the back end. Uh, what it does is it calculates the average number of spills that your job is creating, and if that average goes beyond beyond the threshold, right? Then it's really, uh, really bad. Uh, you need to implement improve your system. 
now how it does is uh, it actually calculates the average number of spills and then it also uh, considers the max heap allocated to your job uh, allocated to every mapper or every producer and also use uh, use the counters that how much heap that your job has or or the map uh, has actually utilized and what is the difference that you have not used right so it basically calculate all those things and and gives you a recommended value of uh, this configuration which is the sort buffer right io dot mp and other related configurations right record percent and other things right so it it gives uh, the recommendation on what should be the actual value or uh, ideal value for uh, for your job um the next tool is uh, the job compression out, uh, output compression so uh, this is recommended in every job just to check that okay how much data your job is writing in the cfs and if it goes beyond beyond certain limit right you should be enabling uh, output compression um, it it is a must for for web job when it's writing data right it it actually calculates it uh, through the uh, configurations that you set in your job right if it is false then it tells you okay or make it and then the small file problem is a typical problem um uh, from the name node perspective but on, also on the map reduce perspective and uh, you know when you are working on very small files you end up creating uh, you know thousands of mappers right um, you know losing your time on on the initialization of maps so it takes uh, it takes consideration of how much data your job is working on and how much uh, mappers you have created so it finds out and calculates okay your job is really uh, working on the small files so it it gives you the recommendation on using combined file in this format to combine other uh, Um, parameters. So the average mapper time. So it is recommended in a map reduce job that your average mapper time should always be like you know close to one minute for the unit to utilize uh, better uh, map reduce solution. So uh, this tool calculates okay if your map average mapper time is very less, like even less than ten seconds, right? So then you should be uh, you should be uh, improving your uh, I mean uh, either increase the split size that map or work if map is working. um uh, or use the strip combinations of uh, uh, combined file format the reducer skewness this is more on the key pattern that is your map reduce job is working on uh, one reducer might get a lot of uh, you know data and the other others are not so this uh, this rule actually calculates the whether there is a skew in the reducer right and it, it suggests you that you can, uh, work on the reducer job the key pattern it doesn't give you the solution exactly but it tells okay there is a skewness uh the data locality it calculates okay uh, how much how many of the mappers that you have in your job are data local stack local or you right? so uh, it it calculates the percentage and if the percentage goes beyond the limit it actually gives you a, a, a you know alert or severity that you can get i mean make your job uh, data more local speculative execution in some cases it might uh, you know create a negative effect right in some cases Uh, when you are talking to the external system, you, you really don't need external speculative execution, and you end up wasting your a lot of time. So it it calculates if your uh you know speculative execution is okay for the task that you are tasked with. Um, other rules is intermediate output compression. It just check one parameter and and compression codec gives you the compression codec checks and. Uh, and there is a intermediate uh, job compression uh, there are other other uh, uh, parameters that uh, big in temp file compression also if you are uh, it also checks okay um, if your hive job if your hive table right is a bucketed uh, bucketed table then you better use bucket join for uh, you know uh, make the configuration uh, for the for hive to use the bucket join right and uh, it also has uh, has the metadata about all the tables which table is large which table is small right it can even suggest you okay go for a uh, map side join for this particular join right um it also tells okay the path is the high query and checks okay whether your high query limit to uh, enable the limit optimization considering all the other factors of the limit optimization um so next step is uh, so this is uh, targeting only one job at a time right the next step for this tool is to you know go across the jobs and learn the behavior of your job over the period of time and suggest better recommendations right um the sort of machine learning right uh, that we have learned in this tool is still uh, under development uh, right now and uh, we have 
plan to Uh, hi. Uh, hi, I just want to ask, uh, how do you decide data locality for the mappers? How do you find out which mapper is uh, data local? Oh, uh, okay. So, how do give the, uh, if you have seen, uh, you know, jobs counters, uh, there is one uh, counter called data local and the rack local, right? There's a two counters which tell you, okay, these many mappers uh, are your data local map. Okay, so I was just like I am aware of that, but I'm just uh, thinking that did you write any customization for that to find out what is the pair and like did you basically overwrite that code to find out how do you decide the uh, see if it is not rec local or if it is not on the same machine yep. if it is at the remote side I don't think that counter will tell us yeah that, so right? uh, so what we do is so you have total number of mappers you have data local mappers you have rec local mappers and the remaining if you subtract from the total mappers it comes out to be even the remote map, right? So that's how we don't have any extra code. We are utilizing this uh, counters and calculating all these things. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, uh, this is Janesh here. So I have this Dr. Hadoop which you have. So is this uh, uh, known to your company already is it available for others? Sorry? Is it also outsourced or is it uh, property of your company? Uh, so uh, this is still under development. Uh, okay. So we have plans to open source. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so. Uh, okay. So Let's repeat the question. Uh, so when you wanted to collect the requirements for, for the software, did you get inspired by some other tool which is proprietary or some other tool which is open source? No, to be honest, no. But there are, uh, there is one product uh, called uh, Hadoop Vedya, right? Uh, which is similar to this, but that has uh, a limitation uh, in, in, the, in the that you have to give the logs to it. It will not maintain its own repository. And also, uh, since it is not maintaining any data, it is not creating its own database, right? It works on the instance of the data and gives you recommendations, right? Uh, but this tool is different in the sense that it, it actually maintains the history of your job, right? And it has the capability of, to learn about your job and give you the recommendation. That's one difference. But uh, the motivation behind this tool was not that, right? Uh, we were working in a Hadoop performance engineering thing and we, we saw these are kind of the typical problems uh, that occur for, for beginners. So that's, that's what uh, the main Okay, for the next questions, our partners over, uh, sponsors over at Bloomreach have uh, decided to give you guys, during these stressful times, they have some de-stressing stress balls. So for the next few people who ask questions, they're going to be passing out some stuff. So uh, make sure you get your hands up high. We want as many questions as we can. We got about roughly five more minutes for questions. Hi, this is Rahul. I am from 24-7. So you mentioned that Dr. Hadoop um, does something... Um, it calculates the average mapper time and suggests a split size. So, does it also set the split size? No. So, it gives you the recommendation. It, it doesn't set it automatically. And in maybe in the later job, we can uh, set yes, it, right? Yes. Okay. Just recommendation. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Next question. Raise your hand up high. This man right here. Uh, hi. This is Mayank from Savan. Uh, do you have plans so that this uh, Docker group is easily usable for uh, AWS EMR? Um, we have not thought of it yet. It's, as I said, it's just under, de under development and it's working uh, with our team. Okay, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for questions right now. Everybody give a big round of applause. Thank you, Thank you very, Thank very you. much. Yep. Appreciate it.